Good morning, folks. We've got a special video coming tonight, so swing back around here later. But right now, we're running down space weather, the ninth record cold and snow event of the Americas this year, and our top science news. We begin at spaceweathernews.com. And finding the last day on our star maintains the patchy southern coronal hole extensions reaching up to low latitude from the south. The bright region on the south as well is still the no sunspot remains of the active region that popped up a week ago, still in decay. As we look at the solar wind, the descent in telemetry intensity halted yesterday and flattened out in tremendously calm range. This ambient stream is very weak, but the leveling off allowed the KP to finally begin to recover after 48 hours of cosmic ray health alerts. Let's go to Alaska, where the record warmth shifted to record cold for many of the regions, including the coldest temperature recorded anywhere in Alaska in almost a decade. The previous system has been pounding blizzard-like conditions into the central states, closing highways, and creating a travel nightmare. The system is still strong as it heads over the Great Lakes today, wrapping snow around the western side for one more Midwest dusting before sliding into the northeast. Let's go on to the science news and begin with a galaxy that is much, much prettier than its name, ESO 021-G004. Oof. Of course, the picture says a thousand words, and the bright central core is indeed the point of interest here. It's an active galactic nucleus, meaning it is shining in all wavelengths of light, and at that very center also lies a torus, a jet, and a surrounding disk. The model, which is now firmly solidified thanks to the last three years of peer-reviewed study, is a core formation of the plasma cosmology, and it is also shown to be the result of magnetic fields twisting electric currents up into the jet. We recall that one was from SLAC National Plasma Lab back in 2018. Up next, folks, the milli-charged dark matter papers are going to be making a comeback in 2020. It is probably their last, smallest particle attempt to use mysterious matter to explain the discrepancy. And what do you know? Their explanation is that the electric forces of the miniature charge makes all the difference which is so darn close to the plasma cosmology claim that it's the electric forces of the plasma we don't see so well. In truth, folks, the combination of a new magic particle with electric charge is just their way of getting around the utter failure of their hypothesized particles to represent reality, let alone ever be found. Up next is a little bit of a reality check for those scared of ionospheric manipulation. In an emission much stronger than anything they've shot up from the ground, they attempted to modulate the ionospheric plasma with an electron beam. And while their super sensitive instruments were able to pick up the slight oscillations and modulations, the readings tell me definitively, humans are ants. We can throw a rock in a river and make ripples, but all that water is still heading down the stream anyway. There's nothing we can do. Folks, I actually figured they might be able to do a little more than this to the ionosphere, but then again, I also knew that the truth of geoengineering is always somewhere between the mainstream denial and our imagination's worst concoction. Last but not least, folks, there was a drop in superflare papers over the last 12 months, coming after the Japan Astronomical Society and the University of Colorado scientists had fairly conclusively proven that the sun can indeed superflare in its rare outbursts into its sixth magnetic gear. Well, folks, I cannot believe how much they found when they checked the heavens. Not just solar type size and age, but sun-like rotators too. They used tests and they found hundreds of super flares. Most of them have no detected giant planet orbiting. The trigger once thought required for recurrent nova and super flares is dead. And the sun sitting up there just had one of the scientists most clung to reassurances about the quiescence of our star evaporate like the habitability in a planet caught too close to a super flare. That will be Earth for a brief period when the sun shows herself once more in the coming years. The Catastrophe Cycle series continues tonight. I'll see you then. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.